guys welcome back to my channel as you can see i got myself a new toy i got a kawasaki klx 230s this is a obviously a dual sport so i can use it on road and off road which is the main reason that i wanted it that way i can have fun off road but i can also have a little bit of like a daily driver to get to and from the gym just be bopping around town uh but yeah so here she is so this is obviously a entry level motorcycle, we'll call it. Um, I've never owned a dirt bike or motorcycle of any kind. I rode them a couple times when I was little, but I was never really comfortable on them. Um, very comfortable on quads and everything. Rode those a ton. Um, so I had the clutch work down, which was, I feel like a really big help when riding this because I already knew how to use a clutch. But so that being said, I got the 230S model of the KLX. Um, just because, so the 230, they have the 230R, which is just like the normal 230. Um, so it's, I think like an inch, inch and a half higher than this one does. And it's the typical Kawasaki green colors, which I'm not really a fan of. I used to be back in the day when I was little, all I wanted was a Kawasaki green dirt bike. <laughs> um, but so I finally got my Kawasaki just in the Stingray and black color. But like I was saying, so the 230S sits a little bit lower, which is great for entry rider entry level riders which obviously i am and yeah so let me give you guys a little walk around show you some of the upgrades that i've already done because if you know me i waste no time with upgrades whether it's jeeps pretty much anything that i own but yeah so let me give you guys a little tour all right so i'm just going to kind of do a little walk around tour of it just showing you what the bike looks like so starting off in the front So obviously, since this is more of a dual sport, um, more of like the dirt bike side of a dual sports, it's not like a touring bike or anything like that. So it comes with off-road tires, everything like that. And then this is gonna be the screen up here. So you have, I don't know if you guys can see it, but you'll have your gas gauge, you have your clock, your odometer, and then obviously how fast you're going. One complaint I have is that it doesn't tell you what gear you're in. Um, but obviously not the end of the world. It is a six speed, so you kind of just have to count your gears <laughs> as you're going up, but only complaint. So moving on to the side of the bike, as you can see, there is, sorry, I stepped on a cactus like two minutes ago, so I'm terrified of stepping on another one. Um, but so you have passenger pegs. Um, I personally am never going to use them because I'm kind of traumatized because when me and James are in Asia, I was like, oh, let me put it on the back of the scooter. Like, I'll be fine, I got this. Did that and I fell for the first time ever on a scooter and got pretty beat up. So I don't think I'll ever have anybody on the back of this thing, not to mention how tiny the seat is and it already has not that much power to begin with. So adding a second person, I feel like would not be great. <laughs> so while we're on the side of the bike, um, you don't really have any under seat storage or much storage at all on these things, which is why I got this rack. Um, but what they do give you is, um, so you literally have this tiny little storage compartment, I would call it. Um, and it just comes with like a couple tools for if you're in a pickle, um, if you need to change your tire and stuff like that. That is the only storage that you get on this bike. Like I said, it, is convenient just in case you do get stuck and need tools. To Moving on to the back of the bike. Um, like I said, you don't have any storage under the seat or anything. Um, so PMR Racks was kind enough to send me out a rack for this bike and some straps. So I usually kind of just put my sweatshirt, a little bag, just stuff for the day trips on there. So just nice to have a little space for something. Um, this is going to be coming off soon. I hate the rear fender, so I'm going to get a rear fender delete for that. And yeah, so this is this is the bike. <laughs> I don't really know how to give you guys a tour of a bike, but there it is. While we're on the topic of upgrades, also going to be upgrading the exhaust somewhat soon. I want to take the baffle out. <laughs> Sorry. I want to take the baffle out, but I've heard from my dad and just a couple other people that if you take the baffle out, it makes you lose power. I forget why or the reasoning, but only reason I might just get a new exhaust instead of taking the baffle out and risking losing any more power. 
So just gonna show you some of the couple upgrades that I've done so far. So I got Pro Taper, obviously pink, pink and black Pro Taper grips because the grips that come on this are not very comfortable and my hands were slipping off completely. So got those. Got a knockoff quad lock because I was not spending $70 on a phone mount. Um, got this on Timu. I think the mount was $4. The little sticky thing was like 50 cents. Works. I can't do this one handed. Hold on. And the most important upgrade that I've done so far is the skid plate. So the KLX 230 does not come with a skid plate at all, um, which I feel like is kind of dumb because it, like I said, it's a dual sport. It's, they know people are mainly going to be riding it off road. And I, every time I off road, I kept smacking that exact spot, like smacking the frame, whatever. And I was like, I really need some protection <laughs> because now it's dented. Like the actual frame itself has got some like nicks and stuff in it. Um, so that's why I got the skid plate because like I said, it didn't come with it, which is kind of bad move on Kawasaki's part, but it is what it is. So I just want to kind of show you guys how tall I guess the bike is um, or how how it looks for a rider who's 5'5". Five, 5'5 five. Um, five, five and a quarter, I like to give myself that extra little quarter. Um, so as you can see, I'm sitting pretty comfortable on this thing. Um, just tiptoed, I'm also in flip-flops while I film this video. When I have sneakers on, I'm a little bit more flat-footed, I guess. Um, but to me, this is the perfect height for a beginner. Um, I was looking at the KLX 300 and the Honda 300, but they sat a little too high for my liking. Um, so I was probably more like this, if you can even see that, <laughs> on the 300. And I was just worried that off-roading, it was going to be a little sketchy for me, like I said, because I've never rode a bike before. Um, so I didn't know how I was going to feel. Looking back now, I probably could have got the 300 and been fine because I got very comfortable on this very quickly. Um, kind of feel like I'm outgrowing it, just power wise and stuff like that. But I mean, it is what it is. I knew it was gonna be a beginner bike. I knew I was gonna outgrow it eventually, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, like I said, um, we're on the topic, I guess, of power. Um, so if you're looking for a bike that's really good with power, this probably isn't the best pick. Um, Off-road, it's great but on road trying to keep up with traffic when it's like 65 70 it's a little challenging um especially we're in colorado right now and the elevation i feel like is kind of getting to the bike because it is air cooled um and it's just like i think the highest i ever got on this was going 75 and the whole bike was just like shaking like crazy i mean it is a small it's a light bike whatever but if you're wanting a bike that you can constantly go on the highway with, this is not, not your pick. <laughs> so that and the gear thing, honestly, are the only complaints that I have about this bike. Other than that, I love it. Um, it's my little, my little bestie. Um, I pretty much ride it every day on off-road, things like that. But yeah, definitely, like I said, it's a great beginner bike. Um, but if you're looking for something for a little bit more power, I would personally go with a 300 because I feel like you might outgrow this just a little bit all right guys well there you have it that is my little tour i guess of my new dirt bike like i said in my last video i do not have my jeep with me it's back in pa we're in colorado as you can probably see from the landscape and for now i don't know if i'm going to bring it back out um i just don't really want to put the miles on it but still going back and forth but for now all my off-road content is going to be of me and my dirt bike um, been doing a lot of BDR and off-road trails in general, so gonna have some videos up of that soon. I just ordered my Insta360, so that should be here next week, so I can start filming some cool off-road videos and everything like that for you guys. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know if there's any other videos you would like to see of travel, adventure, off-roading, you name it.